So the last thing we'll talk about in finite difference is uh, uh, for elliptic equations. So we have went through all these three questions for hyperbolic and the parabolic equations. So first of all, how to approximate the derivatives with arithmetic. So these are the finite difference operators we now know, we now know how to derive using Taylor series analysis. And then we also used the same Taylor series analysis to figure out how much approximation error we are making in every term we are approximating in the differential equation. So the last question, which is a bit different for different kinds of equations, is, is how much how does the approximation error affect the solution error, right? So for parabolic and elliptic equations, we did the Newman stability analysis. We derived the so-called error equation that links the approximation error with the solution error. And now let's try to do the same with elliptic equations and see how does the approximation error affect the solution error for elliptic equations? So elliptic equations are like the, uh, the Poisson's equation, where after discretization, we get a system A times U plus F is equal to zero. So that's the kind of equations we end up solving, right? OK, so this U we solved for is actually the numerical <coughs> solution. And if you plug in the finite difference operator uh, if you, to the real solution, to the analytical solution, if you apply the finite difference operator to the analytical solution, it won't be equal to 0, right? Instead, what is it going to be equal to? Remember, A is our discretization for the finite difference operator. In one dimension, for example, A would applying the matrix A would be the same as applying a finite difference operator like that, right? So if you, if you apply AU, so this is AU, if you apply AU plus F, that will be the finite difference operator plus f at the same grid point, right? Okay, so how do we figure out how large this is? We subtract something that we know is zero. We subtract what we know is the differential equations plus f is equal to zero. So we subtract this differential equation. What we get is f gets canceled right so what we get is f get cancelled we get the difference between the numerical the funny difference approximation for the second order derivative and the true second order derivative that is the approximation error so that means if we plug in the real solution into the same matrix system we have, what we get is AU plus F would be equal to, let's call this thing tau. So this thing is the truncation error, it's tau. Wait, AU plus F is equal to tau. Yeah, that's right. So now, if we take the difference between them, A times U minus U hat would be equal to tau. So this is saying that this is my solution error. This is my truncation error. They are related with the same matrix where I used to solve my finite difference system. Right? Or in another way to say it is that the, this is, if we call this the error E, E is equal to A inverse times tau. So how big this matrix A inverse is? By big, I mean like the how much it'll amplify a, a vector is going to be determining how much amplification do I get uh, in the solution in terms of the error. Okay. Does it make sense? Okay. So so the that that means the stability of the elliptic equation is very much linked to the, the A inverse, 
right, the magnitude of the inverse. So, for example, let's just look at what the inverse looks like for a one-dimensional Poisson's equation. Okay, so let's go to MATLAB. And uh, uh, for one-dimensional Poisson's equation, let's set uh, n equal to 10 first, all right? And uh, uh, let's take my a to be identity of n minus 1. So because uh, I'm assuming also a uh, Dirichlet boundary condition on both sides. So let's first construct a dx. And uh, a is equal to identity of n minus 1 divided by divided by dx square and uh, uh, so this is should be minus 2 right plus a diagonal of 1's n minus 2 1 and 1 and plus diagonal of 1's n minus 2 1 and minus 1 so this is my matrix I get a 9 by 9 double oh I forgot to divide by delta x on both sides so let me just uh, divide by delta x over uh, the entire thing. What what did I do? I, da, 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 I think I pressed the uh, control C. Dx square. Why do I still get one over here? Oh, okay. So I think I just uh, pressed the control C on the whole thing. So A should be the parenthesis of uh, identity plus diag plus diag. I need another parenthesis over here. Okay, so, so that's my one-dimensional Poisson's equation, right? Let's look at A inverse is equal to the inverse of A. So let's look at what this looks like. Okay. So now if we look at the inverse of this matrix, what we get is, if you look at all the entries of this matrix, they are pretty small, right? So for example, if I just plot one column of A inverse, for example, if I plot the first column, it looks like this, 10 to the minus 3. If I plot F, uh, the second column it looks like this so so every single column of a is pretty small okay so how about if I increase n by a factor of 10 if I set n equal to a hundred right and uh, I would uh, I need to compute the X again and I compute a again and a inverse again so let's plot just a random, uh, let's say 20 of a column of A, we get also pretty small values, right? So it turns out for the Poisson's equation, for the Poisson's equation, the magnitude of the inverse of A doesn't really depend on how fine you discretize the mesh, right? We have a pretty small factor that amplifies whatever truncation error we get. All right, remember we are looking at every columns of A inverse, right? That gives us how does each entry in the truncation error tau affect the entire entire solution, right? So. Basically, what we are seeing is that the 20th entry in tau is going to give us a error that is about 10 to the minus 3 that, is, uh, uh, that has the highest magnitude at the index 20 and the lower magnitude everywhere else. So that's a pretty nice feature of the Poisson's equation that uh, we, get, uh, we get a small amplification error and we expect a pretty accurate solution even if you have some moderate truncation error. All right. Any questions about this? And you can actually mathematically prove that the amplification uh, you get is bounded no matter how fine of a grid you, you have. Okay. So this this is telling us 
we get good solutions for the Poisson's equation and actually for many other elliptic equations. If we can solve the matrix system exactly, right, all we are doing is we are assuming we are solving the matrix pretty accurately. But in reality, especially when you have a huge system, you are actually not, you shouldn't expect you will be able to solve the matrix system exactly. So another question is, in this case, not only we want to ask how does the approximation error, approximation error affect the solution, but also how does the error in solving the linear system would affect the solution. 